Here we go! It's time for Maths with Mr. Thomas. This is the review lesson for the straight line chapter. We have finished every single lesson. We have looked at the real life examples. We looked at some past paper questions. And we now know everything. This review lesson just makes sure that we do know everything and it just skims over the surface of every lesson just making sure that there is nothing that you have forgotten. If there is, look back at the individual lessons because here, as I said, I'm skimming the surface, I'm not going over anything in a lot of detail and I'm not covering every example. So if there's anything you do want to look over, if you want more of an explanation, load up this lesson. The way we started off this chapter was we looked at some national for revision, and that mainly started off with y equals mx plus c. Just remember, m shows us the gradient, and c shows us the y-intercept. Perfectly right. We know from national four that the gradient is a measure of the steepness of the line, and if you work out the vertical distance divided by the horizontal distance, you will get a number. That number is known as the gradient. The gradient of a line is positive if a line slopes up from left to right, and if a line slopes down from left to right, it is a negative gradient. And if we are given two points on a coordinate diagram, if you draw in a right angle triangle, you could measure the vertical distance, you can measure the horizontal distance, you can sub them into this amazing little formula, and you can work out the gradient. Just remember, because the line slopes down the way from left to right, it's a negative gradient. The y-intercept is the point at which the graph crosses the y-axis. So, if the line crosses at 4 for the y-intercept, the value of c would be 4. If the graph was crossing at negative 11, then c would be negative 11. That is the y-intercept. In order to read off the gradient and the y-intercept, of a line, you have to make sure the line is in the form of y equals mx plus c. The number in front of x shows you the gradient, m, and the number that's on its own shows you the y-intercept, which these examples are doing. If you have two parallel lines, what's special about parallel lines? They have the same gradient! They do have the same gradient. You are perfectly right, Daniel. Well done! Horizontal lines. If you've got a horizontal line, a perfectly flat line, what is the gradient of a flat line? Zero! It is zero, yes. Well done. If you have then an equation of the line, well, the equation is just going to be y equals whatever number that goes through on the y-axis. So your equation of this line would just be y equals 6. The equation of this line would be y equals negative 2. The value of m is zero, so that means you'd have zero x. So you don't need to write that. So you just really have y equals c for the equation. If we flip that and instead look at the vertical line, well, a vertical line has an undefined gradient because the vertical distance divided by the horizontal, well, you do have a vertical distance. You can measure that. But the horizontal distance is zero, so you've got some number that you're dividing by zero. Bam, bam, bam! If you try that in a calculator, it gives you an error. You cannot divide by zero. It makes no sense. This is when the equation of the line changes ever so slightly. Instead of being in the form y equals mx plus c, if it is a vertical line, the equation is x equals whatever number the line goes through on your x-axis. So this vertical line here goes through the x-axis at 5, 0. So it'll be equation x equals 5. This one here is at negative 7, 0. So equations x equals negative 7. After we looked at that revision from national 4, we then went on to rearranging the equation y equals mx plus c. As I mentioned a minute ago, in order to read off the gradient in the y-intercept, you have to make sure the equation is of the form y equals. If it's not, then rearrange it. And that's what this lesson was on. There are quite a few examples with rearranging to get into the form of y equals something x plus or minus something. This example here, I'm going to keep this in and point it out, there is a negative value for the y. If you have that, well, you could always take 4x from both sides, take 3 from both sides, and it would leave you with negative y equals. However, if you have a negative y, sometimes what is, is best to do is to get rid of the negative y, first of all, by adding y to that side. It means on the other side, you would also add y. 
So you'd have 4x add 3 equals y. Write it back to front. Instead of left-hand side equals right-hand side, put right-hand side equals left. And you'll get y equals 4x plus 3. This was another equation, just getting into the form of y equals, but one that was a little trickier. Again, if you're wanting a full explanation on this, look back at the individual lesson. After we went on to rearranging, we then went on to look at the gradient formula. So far, we know that the gradient is the vertical distance divided by the horizontal distance. It's a measure of the steepness. But we were going on to look at what we could do if we know two points. If we knew a point, well, a point would have an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate, Another point the same, an x coordinate, a y coordinate, call one of them point one and one of them point two. And in order to work out the gradient, what you do is you take the second y coordinate minus the first y coordinate, divide that by then the second x coordinate, take away the first x coordinate. So the gradient formula, vertical over horizontal, becomes y2 take y1 over x2 take x1. We then went on to look at what you do if you have two points. We well, can then work out the gradient using that formula. Gradient equals y2 take y1 over x2 take away x1. Just remember, if you've got a negative gradient, well, the negative can go at the bottom, the negative can go at the top, or the negative can go at the side. Uh, all it means is that line is going to slope down the way from left to right. And again, there were more examples with that. Just look out if you end up with a zero divided by a number. Well, zero divided by any number will just be zero. And if you get zero for the gradient, it means the line is going to be horizontal. Try not to get that mixed up with if you end up with a number divided by zero. Remember, you can't divide by zero. The answer isn't zero, it's undefined. It's impossible to divide by zero, which means the gradient's undefined. And if you have that, well, just remember that means you have a vertical line. And the equation of a vertical line is just going to be x equals some number. The clue to look out for is with your points, look to see if they have the same x value. If they do have the same x value, well, the answer is just going to be x equals whatever that number is, because it means one point will be above the other, so it will be a vertical line that you will draw between them. After that gradient formula lesson, we went on to look at the equation of a line, but it was just when c is given to begin with. So, the equation of a straight line, y equals mx plus c, if you have to write down the equation of a straight line in that form, you need to know two things. You need to know the gradient, and you need to know the y-intercept. For each of these examples, c was given. All you had to do was work out the gradient. Again, use the formula. y2 take y1 over x2 take away x1. Get the gradient from the y-intercept. You can just tell what that is by looking at the graph. Remember, it's where the line crosses your y-axis. Here we're crossing at 3, so we know the y-intercept is 3. Once you know the y-intercept, then all you do in your equation is replace c with whatever value we found it to be. And that's the equation of the line. There were more examples like that. Some of them the graphs were given, and some of them they were not. For this example here, there is no graph drawn, there is no picture. Uh, but you can still get the equation of the line by getting the gradient and getting the y-intercept. Remember, the y-intercept is where the graph crosses your y-axis, and it's going to cross the y-axis at zero something. And to work out that something, well, here it was given. It tells you it crosses at zero negative one. Oh, so it does. Because it crosses at zero negative one, it means the y-intercept is negative one. That's the point that it crosses over. Once we mastered that, oh, I'm so good at it. We then went on to look at what happens when C is not given. But that was absolutely fine. All we had to do was take the gradient and one of the points and sub the x and y values of the points and the gradient into the equation y equals mx plus C. We then just rearranged that equation in order to work out what C is. And once we knew C, we would sub that along with M back into the original equation. So, for example, if we had to work out the equation of this line, well, it's dead easy to get the gradient, y2 take y1 over x2 to x1, uh, but the y-intercept is not clear what point this is. You could hazard a guess at it, but you might be wrong. What you do is you take one of the points, 
For example, the 4, 1, I normally try to avoid negatives and try to avoid bigger numbers. So just taking that point 4, 1, replace the x value with 4, replace the y value with 1 in your original equation, y equals mx plus c, and replace m with what you worked it out to be. Remember, m is the gradient. If you do that, then the only thing missing will be c, so you can work out what c is. After you know c, well, you know the gradient, you know the y-intercept, so you can sub them into that original equation to get the equation of line. Easy as pie. After we did that, we then went to apply all of this knowledge to some real life examples. This was an example here, John the Plumber, using the chart to work out how much to charge his customers. It started off with various questions such as what's his call out charge? Well, the call out charge is how much he charges before he even starts work just for turning up at your house. Hello? It's John! John, come in! You can see from this one, it is 060, that is the point 060, which means for zero hours work, he charges 60 pounds, which means his call out charge is the 60 pounds. We then had to, for B, write down an equation. And for the equation, it's the exact same thing that we were doing in the other lessons. We just had to work out the gradient by choosing two points. We had to get the y-intercept. Well, in this example it was given, we know it's crossing at 60, and we had to write down the equation. So we got y equals 15x, add 60. However, what we had to do with this one was we were wanting to write down the equation in terms of h and c, which means we don't want y and we don't want x. We're wanting h and c, but which is which? Well, if you look at your y-axis, the y-axis we're calling the charge. C for charge, which means that Y is going to be replaced with C. Woo! And the X axis was the hours. H for hours, so replacing X with H, as you can see. So instead of Y equals 15 X add 60, we add C equals 15 H add 60. Whenever you get the examples in terms of real life, imagine what that actually means. So it means the charge, how much he's going to charge his customer, is equal to 15 times the number of hours he works, add 60. Once you think about it in terms of real life, you can solve problems like C. How much should Johnny B charge for a 12-hour job? So once you know your equation, it tells you in the question that it's a 12-hour job, so we know the number of hours is 12, so we can replace H with 12, and it's just substitution from there. The only thing we need to work out is C. It's the only unknown, so we can do it easily enough using substitution. This was an example with Tico's taxis. This was very similar to the last example. However, it is just one of the ones where C is not given. And remember, when C is not given, you work out the gradient. Again, if you want more of an explanation of this, just look back to the individual lesson where I'll go over it in a lot of detail. Work out the gradient after getting the two points. You just get the two points from these two sentences right here. So you get the two points, work out the gradient. <laughs> After you get the gradient, you can substitute the gradient and one of the points. I'm just using this 211. So sub the 211 into y equals mx plus c. Replace m with the 2.5 because that's what it is. And you can rearrange to get c. After you've got m and you've got c, you can sub them into y equals mx plus c. So you get y equals 2.5x, add 6. Once again, though, just always have a look to the question. Here, it's asking you to get the equation in terms of C and D. So again, your y-axis is this one that runs vertically. That is C, so we can replace Y with C. And your x-axis, the horizontal one, well, that here is the distance. So we can replace X with D. So your equation Y equals 2.5X add 6 is actually C equals 2.5D add 6. We can then, again, use that equation to answer a real-life problem. Remember, always think about your equation in terms of real life. C equals 2.5D add 6. What it means is the cost of the journey is going to be equal to 2.5 times the distance travelled add 6. It says in part B, use your equation to work out the cost of a five-mile journey. Well, if it's a five-mile journey, that's the distance travelled. The distance is five miles. So if you know what D is, 
We know the distance is 5. You can replace d with 5 in the equation. The only unknown is c, meaning you can then work it out. Obviously, because it's money, just make sure you write your answer in terms of money with a pound sign and two decimal places. After we went through all of those lessons, we then looked at some of the past paper exam questions. What you will find if you look at these past paper exam questions and even more past paper exam questions is that it's only these topics are really being tested in the straight line chapter. They're just worded differently every single year. That is basically it though for the review. Hopefully that has made sense and you've remembered everything here. But again, if you haven't, look back to the individual lessons where I'll give you more examples and I'll go over, over everything in a lot more detail. If you're happy with that, what you may wish to do is just practice some more questions, either from past papers or some review exercises. This one here in the TJ book is the one I would recommend. Uh, TJ National 5, page 62. Remember, remember. And remember, check your answers. Woo! See ya! See you in the next chapter. Percentages? <gasps> Percentages!